I dedicated my life to activism and to fighting religion and dogma in general. So I went looking for other atheists because I was the only atheist I knew. And soon I discovered that there's actually a lot of us out there. And that was very encouraging and I felt like it felt like finding a family that I didn't know I have. And these were, at the beginning, they were just atheists in Iran. And I was surprised to find them, and they were surprised to find me, and we were all surprised to find each other, and we were all, we were all happy to find each other. It was such a great experience, and I thought, this can't be just happening in Iran. There must be a lot of other atheists all around the world, and they would benefit from discovering each other as well. So made it more global platform and it just grew and grew and grew and it became now 1.6 million followers worldwide and still growing. People in the non-Islamic world, they usually are looking at it in a very selfish way. They're not, they're talking about danger to them. Islam was dangerous way before any terrorist attack happened here in the West. The, the cost of Islam and religion in general, it's not a suicide bomb here and a terrorist attack over there. When you say dangerous, you have to add up all the costs that religions cause that are much more subtle, much less newsworthy, much less interesting that a lot of people suffer every day in the Islamic world without us noticing. Let's say a Muslim that is dedicating his entire life to Islam or her entire life to Islam that doesn't hurt a single other human being, that doesn't preach or influence anybody else's life. We think of that person as somebody that is not causing any harm, but he is causing harm to himself. He has wasted his life to, an, to a lie. The Muslims that are peaceful are not, or moderate, they're not peaceful or moderate because they have a reformed version of Islam. They're ignoring Islam. They are, they are abandoning Islam. They are Muslim by name, they're not practicing Islam, they're not practicing a reform. They are nice, these are people that are nicer than their own religion. The only way to reform Islam is to get rid of Islam. Because the, any other concept of reform, other than the abandonment of Islam, involves believing in things without evidence. Historical versions of reform in Islam never denied Islam, never denied the Quran as a direct word of God, never denied that Muhammad was an infallible role model. These new reform, Western reform versions of Islam is something that is never going to happen and it's actually dangerous because it's suggesting to the West that there is a version of Islam that is not going to harm you. So it's just a politically correct solution that is never going to fly and is taking our attention away from the actual movement that is growing, that it does have a chance, that is the ex-Muslim movement. The reform movement is very condescending because it's suggesting to that the Islam, people living in the Islamic world are too dumb and too stupid to understand that there is no God. So let's just, these dumb people, let's just hope that they believe in a version of Islam that is not going to harm us because it's too soon for us to even introduce secularism and atheism. But guess what? Secularism and atheism existed in these countries way before the United States was even a country. The first two people that I talked about atheism in Iran in my university became skeptical about the religion within weeks. The, the, there's much higher chance of people abandoning their religion once you show them what their religion stands for. It's, it's easier for me to make an argument that, hey, 
Where's an evidence for God? Then to go make a gymnastic argument, hey, maybe this verse that tells you that you could beat your wife, maybe it doesn't mean you can beat your wife. Try making that argument because it plainly says in black and white that you could beat your wife, that you should beat your wife, and there's a lot of hadith that supports what it actually means. So you have to really think that these people are crazy for you to be able to sell that argument. The only reason why they might buy, buy your argument because they are nice people and they're desperate for this verse to mean something else. It's not because your argument for reform makes any sense. The reform movement is treating the Muslim community like children. You're not giving them enough credit you're, that they might actually be reasonable enough to understand that without evidence you can't believe in things. The reform movement is a sugar coating for, for the poison pill of Islam. The only solution to fighting any form of delusion is to provide people with critical thinking skills to understand that what is bullshit and what is fact. And that's what we're trying to do with the ex-Muslim movement. It has a lot more hope, it's growing faster. The reform movement is a fringe group. This is why me and Ali and Yasmin and Faisal, we started a podcast called Secular Jihadists from the Middle East and it's uh, ex-Muslims. And th this is why I believe in ex-Muslims of North America, the Council of Ex-Muslims in Britain and all the other um, ex-Muslim groups that are out there. And I think this is a battle that we're losing. People think that secularism is winning against Islam, but Islam is growing faster. They have much higher presence on social media. They know what they're doing and they're growing. And this is something that we can't afford to get wrong. So betting on the wrong movement against Islamic fundamentalism is gonna cost us dearly. And I'm telling you that ex-Muslim movement is where you have to put the fight against Islam, not the reform movement.